Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. How you doing, buddy? Hey, good. Excited good. about this one? Oh, yeah. This is so exciting. So stay tuned. Let the intro go. We'll catch you on the flip side. So in this ever-changing world of multimedia, or shall I say just media, you have so many different formats as far as how you want to play your content. You have MP3, FLAC, ACC, DSD, WAVE. There's a ton of them. But what happens when you buy a new car and all you want to do is play these things? CDs. What are those? What are those? Where do those go? So what we're looking at here is a Buick Envision. Beautiful looking dash. It's got a gorgeous touchscreen. But what you see is there's no place to put a CD. Now I find this kind of strange because because the person buying a Buick usually is somebody that is in that CD category, meaning that's what they still have and they haven't graduated on to just using a phone for everything. So what do you do? You wanna play your CDs. You know, if you're in that age bracket where you're like, hey, I don't know how to convert, I don't have, you know, you just don't know what to do. It'd be nice if they just made a CD player, right? Correct. That just plugged into the fancy USB jack in the center of the console. That would be cool. It would be cool. And guess what? They do. Really? Yeah, check it out. So what we have here in this white box is a Mito, M-I-T-O, auto. The model number on this is called a 60-USB CD, P-L-A-Y-E-R, CD player. What comes in the box? Some instructions. Read the instructions carefully because what this is going to do is it's going to take your CD, buffer it in like it was a thumb drive. So it's going to do that conversion that you know we're doing in the desktop at home and the little unit here. Take some time. It's not like old school where you put a CD in and it immediately starts playing. It could take anywhere between 30 seconds to a minute to actually start playing. So don't rush it. If you start doing things while it's loading in, well, you're going to have to eject the disc and start over. You have to eject that memory out, start over. Make sure you read these thoroughly before before you start. In the box, you get a USB extension with a very good warning on it that says, confirm operation before utilizing this extension cable. Some USB hubs in cars are more sensitive than others and they won't let you add in this extra five feet of length. Inside, you do get a cable that is about three feet long or one meter. And this guy right here. It says version one on the back with a little number and it's past quality control. But this is it. This is all there is to it. It's got a cool little USB on the end. There's no mounting. There's no screws. It's like it just sits somewhere. But there's no rubber booties to make it sit anywhere. But that's not important. Remember, at the end of the day, all we want to do is play CDs. So if it plays CDs, Golden. Naturally, there's not a lot of installation involved in this other than mounting it. But testing, testing is key. You always want to test these things first. Let's hop back into the car, try to play our disc. A lot of cars nowadays have multiple USBs. Some will be for charge only. Some are input one or USB one. Some are input two or USB two. You want to try to find the one that is USB one and plug it into that. And USB 1 might be on the passenger side, it might be on the driver's side. You don't know. You just plug it in and see. It acts just like a thumb drive in that until there's media inside of the player, it's not going to be recognized by the radio. So we have it plugged in, and it says right there, no media found. Load in our CD. Once loaded in, it's going to buffer in and start reading and start putting it in memory. Once it's ready, it'll appear on the screen like this. You can add a little volume. As the reference standard. Change tracks. This track is used to verify that left Hit the track again. Is maintained. Now as you see it is taking some time. And the reason for that is buffering each song as it goes. So it takes a little bit of time. It's not like an actual CD player that is super fast. It's reading and writing and putting it out to fool this like it was a thumb drive. It's not like an old CD player where it's just like, I wanna go to track 12. Slow down, just let it play through. Do one at a time, there's no hurry here. It's a convenience thing, not necessarily a super fast thing. Now like I said, there's no mounting for this whatsoever. There's no brackets, there's no L-play. So where our job comes in now is figuring out how to put that in. There's a couple different methods and we're probably gonna do it the hardest way possible, right? Yeah. 
Always. Always. One of the easiest ways to mount it in the center console like that would be using some form of double-sided tape or Velcro or something like that. What we have is this stuff right here. This is called Monster Velcro. It's plastic-based, meaning this isn't fuzzy or felty. This is plastic on both sides. Both the hook and loop are serious. And this stuff is expensive. But as you see when it goes together, it really goes together. Now what makes this stuff super cool, believe it or not, it's the double-sided tape that they use. Some of the stickiest double-sided tape ever. I used to buy this when I was adding in headresting cars because I wanted the double-sided tape. There wasn't any double-sided tape out there that was as good. This stuff sucked by comparison. So that might be a method. Put a couple strips of that, stick it to the inside of that there, and call it a day. Well, what we're thinking about doing is making some form of a panel mount to actually screw it into place. So we're gonna head over and maybe cut some plastic. The first thing we want do is see how deep this center console is and I have six and a half inches ish yeah it's about six and a half inches it's a little taller at the back but six and a half inches whatever we cut six and a half inches should be good thinking about doing is making the outside panel out of eighth inch the side panels out of half inch so that I can attach them all together either way we're gonna start cutting some six and a half inch pieces this guy is an inch and a half thick. Well, we're gonna go ahead and cut the half inch a little bit thicker than an inch and a half because we're gonna be wanting to put some double-sided tape in there to hold everything tightly together. When taking our measurements, we wanna take the pieces we just cut and check for height. So I went a little bit tall. I'm gonna cut these down a little bit more. I'm getting six and three quarters. That fits perfect. Now the wire needs to come out somewhere. I'm gonna have it come out this side right here. I'm gonna cut this leg shorter. Now when mocking up plastic like this, we use this red Tessa tape. It's actually for scrapbooking, but it sticks really well. And most of the time after using it, you don't have to worry about putting screws. So we're gonna put some double-sided tape onto this hold it into our back panel. Now the purpose of this back panel is for us to have something to screw it down to in the car and also to tuck the excess USB cable underneath it, like so. So we can have just what we need coming out and plugging into it. Now that we have it all assembled here, the last thing we wanna do, we're just gonna put a stopper here on the bottom to make sure that stays put. For that, we're just gonna use a little scrap piece of half inch that we have left over. So this is what we're thinking. We'll be able to screw it inside of the car. We put this in so that it sits this way, which is backwards. And the reason why we did that is because the contour of the center console, this will mount vertical and it'll mount horizontal. If we mount it to where this button is the right direction, it's going to mount past 90 degrees, which means the transport will be upside down. This way it's leaning a slight bit towards the passenger side. And it looks good. That's how it'll look inside there. He'll be able to get his disc in and it clears the door, which is important. We're gonna put a screw here and a screw here along with some more tape just to hold it in place. We're also gonna head over to the bench and put a couple screws along here just to hold it all together. To screw it together, we're gonna use some really tiny screws here, some little one point tip screws. We wanna make sure that the screws go in in the same spot on both left and right. To achieve that, we'll use our straight edge here. Blacked out our screw heads so they blend in. We'll do the same on the back. All right, we have our tape all on here. Now this tape is just gonna hold it in place while we screw it in. Let's go screw it in. And the reason why we're only putting two screws here at the top is because the way this center console is designed, it's two pieces, but towards the bottom, it gets very thin. And I'm thinking that the two are touching, whereas up here at the top, it wasn't. Make sure it closes. Now we'll do a final test. Make sure everything works the way it's supposed to. Takes a minute to buffer in. Like I said, don't rush it. Ah, pink noise. Never sounds so good track up on musical tracks that and just like that we've got a happy customer that can play his cds all right guys that brings this one to an end fernando if you please on to the next one guys exactly you guys have a wonderful night as always we'll see you later next time